Yesterday there was another terrorist attack in London. Two of them, as a matter of fact. And all over the world, people are struggling against chaos. But be careful. This is not a new phenomena. In fact, if you look at Genesis chapter 1, you'll see chaos was there in the beginning. Do you remember the passage? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was void and without form, and the Spirit of God moved across the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light. Our gospel lesson today, frankly, simply reiterates what the Jews had been telling the world since the very beginning. Chaos and light. On this feast day of Pentecost, we have a long service. <laughs> and so I want to keep my remarks uh, with that in mind. The wise man once told me, he said, the mind can only conceive what the seat can endure. But I do want to drop into your heads and into your hearts this morning something for you to contemplate. You don't like chaos in your life. You like things to be the way you want them to be. That's what you want. Just ask my wife. She'll tell me I'm that way. I am not a fan of clutter. I don't like it. No, 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 no. That's not fair. I despise it with every fiber of my being. It wasn't strong enough. Chaos makes me nervous. A mess makes me uncomfortable. It feels like things aren't as they should be. In your life and in my life, we have problems when we get to points in our life where we feel chaotic, where we feel like we're out of control, where we feel like we don't have any uh, a handle on things. We feel like things are out of our control. And because of that, we react in certain ways. Now, what if there was a pathway of life? What if there was a way to live that when moments of chaos came, you remained at peace? What if there was a pathway of life, a way of life, a structure of life that would give you peace in the midst of chaos? Well, I'm here to tell you this morning, brothers and sisters, that that pathway of life is yours if you wish it, if you wish to walk it, if you wish to actually embrace it. Now, it's wonderful that you were born to a uh, fill-in-the-ethnic word family, Greek family, Russian family, Serbian family, Romanian family. Whatever you, that's great, that's wonderful. That means you got a head start. What have you done with it? Pregnant pause. And it's wonderful that you have, through your reading or through your, your, through your looking, you've discovered the faith and you've converted to orthodoxy. That's wonderful. But brothers and sisters, orthodoxy isn't a philosophical system. It is a way to conduct your everyday life. That's what orthodoxy is. Orthodoxy is different than any other religion on the face of the earth. All other religions are a philosophy of life. Orthodoxy is a way of life that changes your behavior from the time you wake up to the time you go to bed. You don't go to sleep like other people do. Before you go to sleep, you make your stavro and you say your prayer. That's, that's what Orthodox Christians do. When you wake up in the morning, you don't wake up like other people do. Reach for your phone to see if you've got any text messages. You make your stavro and you say, instead of good Lord morning, you say, good morning, Lord. There is a way, there is the path of light that dispels chaos in your life. If you have chaos in your life, brothers and sisters, the remedy isn't to have some kind of uh, philosophical change of mind. The remedy is to actually do your orthodox faith. That's the remedy. Because Jesus has said that he is the light of the world and orthodoxy is about obtaining and living out the way of Jesus Christ. And brothers and sisters, let me tell you right off the bat, this is hard. In fact, may I even give you even some worse news? It's actually impossible for you. Can't do it. 
So what are, what are you, where are you going to leave us, Father? I said, well, then there's, there's, there's the good news. Here's the good part. The day is the day of Pentecost. The day when Jesus Christ ascends to the right hand of the Father and sends back the Holy Spirit given for one purpose and one purpose only, to empower you to do what you cannot do for yourself. To give you the power, to give you the authority, to give you the will, the strengthened will, to actually choose the right and walk in the light. This feast of Pentecost that we celebrate with such splendor today, I'm even wearing my green today. It's not St. Patrick's Day, this is Pentecost. And Pentecost is about life. It's about the bloom of real life that can occur in your heart if you have the courage to embrace this lifestyle of orthodoxy. To do the faith as well as just talk about it. Or worse yet, not even say anything about it at all and expect people to just kind of notice just because you make the sign of the cross differently. The living of the orthodox faith in your life does not just give light to your path. By you living the orthodox faith every day, you give light to everyone else who is gripped by darkness and chaos and fear. So when you live your orthodox life on purpose in the midst of your family, in the midst of your workplace, in the midst of your extended family, in your neighborhood, on your street, in your cul-de-sac... When you dare to have the courage to embrace the gift of the Holy Spirit that has been given to you to empower you to do what you cannot do on your own, you shed light not only on your own heart, but on everyone around you. This morning, on this Feast of Pentecost, it is not a mistake that when the Pentecostal fire came down, tongues of fire lit on top of the disciples' heads. Light, brothers and sisters, the bane of chaos, the dispatcher of chaos, is given to you through the wisdom of this faith so that you will no longer trip in darkness and chaos will not be your master. I don't know about you, that sounds pretty good. Amen. Amen.